All right, in this video we're checking out the TP3 from FPV Cycle. This is pretty much uh, built exactly to the specifications um, that Kebab FPV put together and they uh, he showed it on his website, the FPV Cycle website. You got your TP3 frame. This is the modular frame with the individual arms that you could replace. I think this is probably better than the, the unibody. If you break an arm, you can just replace it. It's pretty easy. Um, you just take this one screw out here and there's a press fit nut over here on the other side that the screw goes into and I believe that is the only screw you need to take out. There's a center screw that I did not use here and instead I put some rubber silicone padding there for the battery and the rubber bands included with the kit here. So yeah basically you just take that out and then the uh, arms are interlocking underneath this um, bottom plate here. Uh, so that's why you only need to remove one screw and then you can pull it out. I did not use that center screw. It looks like it's not needed. It's just, I mean I did try and you know flex the frame and it doesn't flex at all. Pretty stiff so um, yeah. overall the concept is pretty good. I mean it's a very skinny arm. If you crash hard enough you will definitely crack this arm but they're pretty easy to replace and you can get replacement arms in a pack of five. Uh, check the link down in the description. But yeah, it's built pretty much to spec. Got the motors, of course, 1303 5000 kV. The Gemfan 3016 props with the 2mm hub. I'm using the Beta FPV all in one board with the USB port coming out of the side. And I am recording my flights on with the onboard DVR here. This is the Nameless RC um, all in one uh, VTX DVR. And uh, that's also available in a number of places as well using the newbie drone uh, camera mount here and the run cam nano 3 camera so it's all pretty much built to spec and i'm using an xm plus receiver so the screws i'm using here for the mount stack are the uh, 16 millimeter m2 screws that are included in the kit but you will need a 1.3 millimeter hex driver for that's not a the hex driver for this one is smaller than the 1.5 millimeter for the other M2 screws, so keep that in mind. But it's a pretty straightforward, pretty easy build. Um, the only things I soldered on were the camera, the video transmitter, and the uh, receiver and the motors. So it's um, pretty light overall. I'm guessing it's. Uh, Let's see here, not sure, 62.3 grams, no battery, and I did fly with a 3S450 tattoo. Now just to compare to a previous build with, also with 13 or 3 motors, that one, this one here, this is with the um, first version of the unibody frame. This, they have a, there's a newer version of the unibody frame. This is a uh, the older ones, I don't think it's available anymore, and this one comes in at 59.2 and this one has the Diamond VTX, a Crazy B board, and a Runcam Nano 2. Um, this one has a newbie drone receiver instead of the XM Plus. And so that one's a little bit lighter. This one comes in a little bit heavier, 62.3. Now in terms of the performance of these motors, they're super efficient. Uh, you'll see the full flight uh, on the 450. So the first half of the battery, I'm just kind of doing your typical flippy floppies and acro moves, that kind of stuff. Um, power loops and does all that stuff fine. I, I did uh, flash the uh, Jazz Maverick RPM firmware on here, 16.77. And I'm just using the um, RPM filter settings from my RPM filter video. I'll link that down below, and it's just stock beta flight pits. It does need a little bit of tuning. It's not off by a whole lot, but I think I just raised the gains a little bit because it's a, it's a little bit loose. Um, but yeah, it's a basically a stock beta flight pit tune, and that's what you're going to see. But the efficiency is like pretty insane. I was flying around for like eight minutes, and I was up at 10.6, 10.5 volts. I just landed at that point. Could definitely have gone longer. So the efficiency of the setup is pretty pretty insane. I think it's because of these motors. They probably are truly rated 5000 kV. Now these T motor, these are these prototype 1303s and I haven't gotten the final versions of these yet. I think these are like 5100 kV. 
these definitely had more power. I'm pretty sure it's because the KV is not 5100 KV. It's probably closer to like 7000 KV, I'm thinking, if based on the power of the motor and the efficiency, because this one had a much uh, less efficiency. I think it was getting like five and a half minutes of flight time, and you get way more flight time on the, the FPV cycle, 5000 KV motor. Um, I mean, the power is still pretty good on this motor. It's a little bit, you get a little bit more top end on this one. I think the KV is definitely a lot higher on the T-motor motor, at least on this prototype that I have. I haven't gotten the final version yet, and I've been waiting for that, but because of the whole Chinese New Year and stuff that's going on in China right now, I'm going to have to wait a little while for that. But anyway, this build here is pretty similar to the 1S build. Obviously, uh, that one, there's no video transmitter. I'm using the onboard video transmitter from the Mobula 6 board. So that one's obviously a little lighter, but I think I may do a, I'm going to get, probably get another one of these frames and do a HD build um, and then compare that because I think these, these motors are so efficient. If you uh, switch out the top part here for like a, a Caddx Turtle Whoop and a different video transmitter, uh, you could probably get an HD version of this and get some really long flight times and maybe put crossfire in here and get some really long range. So something I'm looking into, I'm gonna uh, get a, probably get another one of these frames. They're like 17 bucks. Um, and build an HD version compared to this one in a future video. So you wanna stay tuned for that one. Anyway, here's the flight demo. I'll have some more videos in this one later. If you guys are interested in having this like fully tuned out on Betaflight 411 with RPM filter, let me know in the comments below. Um, and uh, if I get enough interest, I'll maybe, maybe make a video on that one later. But anyway, Here's the flight, long flight footage, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Alright, so... Already can tell it's super smooth. It's so quiet. Wow. So I'm running RPM filter. I think I might have mentioned that in the uh, bench route part of the video. But no tuning. I think it does need a little bit of tuning. It's still pretty smooth even without any tuning. It's, uh, it's so quiet. Now you can see it kind of shaking there a little bit. A little bit of wind, but it's not terrible. Oh, there's someone over there with a dog. The dog might be interested. Really nice control though. Yeah, I think I just need to bump up the P and D a little bit. I think it's just, maybe it's a little low, you can see that shaking there. Just kind of loses a little bit of control. Video reception is really nice, although I'm pretty sure I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, onboard recording. It's just... Very, very controllable. Yeah, I have to fly it really close so you can just hear it. I can barely hear it.
Yeah, I think the mint rod is a little high as well. I could reduce that, I think. Flight time's pretty good as expected. 11.3 volts and three and a half minutes almost. Not quite as fast as I thought it might be. I thought it might be a little bit faster. Yeah, you can see when I was doing the power loop there, getting that shutter. I just need more P and D gain, I think. Yeah, if I throttle it up a little bit earlier, kind of get out of it. Yeah. Jeez, the flight time is amazing. Jeez, this flight time is just, like, insane. I'm going for five minutes already. So yeah, I'm <laughs> at six minutes already. This is pretty nuts. And you can't even hear it when it's this far away. And the wind's getting a little bit crazy right now. This is pretty awesome as a little park cruiser. Not gonna be bothering anybody. I mean, I'm almost, I'm, I'm gonna hit seven minutes here. This is like, this is bonkers. I'm just kind of uh, taking it easy at the end of the battery here, but it, you can see 10.8 still, seven minutes. I mean, come on, really? These are, these, these 1303s are definitely more efficient than those T-Motor 1303s, but I don't think they have as much power. Yeah, a little bit less power. I think maybe the KV on those T-Motors might be a little bit on the higher side. I, gosh, I can't remember what the KV was on those. Maybe it was 5100 or something. But this is like, I mean, oh, it's seven and a half minutes. Come on, what the hell? Granted, I am just cruising around here at the end of the battery, but I'm kind of waiting for it to die. It won't die on me. I mean, seriously? Wow. 10.6. And if you guys are warning, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna land when I'm at 10.5. Almost there. Eight minutes, almost. Oh my God, 10.7, what bad, the voltage went up, come on. Seriously? What the hell? Uh, I've never... This is so efficient. This 
is like crazy efficient. All right, 10.5, there we go. Eight and a half minutes, folks. That's, that's insane. Let me know what you guys think.